Frank, but let me ask you this. What about the gaffes uh, that Biden makes and makes repeatedly? I believe it was just yesterday or the day before he made this uh, reference to 120 million people dying of the coronavirus. Clearly, he, uh, you know, he, he missed that and, and should have taken a zero off of it because I think he, what he was talking about was 120,000 people. Uh, the president tweeting out that video, uh, in fact. But do you think that um, the American people are going to look past those mistakes? They are now because Biden has been quiet and Trump's been very uh, loud, I guess is the best way to put it. And during the debates, you know that Biden's going to be held accountable for that. Yes. I mean, this election is absolutely not over. Uh, it, it's it's. Uh, but it's Joe Biden's right now. It's Joe Biden's to lose. And the the key in all of this, if I were the Trump campaign, number one is I would demand five debates, not three. Number two is that I would change my lexicon. I would communicate much more with heart than with a fist. <clears throat> and number three, if I'm Joe Biden, I am, <laughs> honestly, I'm staying in the basement. I'm staying away from the media. Because every time they film me, I make a gaffe. Every time they film me, I make a serious fundamental mistake. So let me ask you, Frank, let me, let me, this is a strategy question, which is it goes to what you're saying the Trump administration and the Biden, uh, the Biden campaign needs to do. You're saying Biden needs to just effectively disappear. But the other issue is that I think Trump has been historically most effective when he was going after Hillary Clinton, for example, of really hitting and hitting hard. That was a, a successful strategy at least four years ago. You don't think that same strategy can apply in this case? No, Why? that's exactly the point. That's exactly the point that things have changed. Conditions have changed. Our economy has changed. The way we relate to each other has changed. There is a riddleness, an anger, a frustration, an anxiety that exists in the American people that did not exist in 2016. And Hillary Clinton was very easy to dislike. And Donald Trump had her number. He knew exactly what to say. Now, in 2020, we have all this, we have, we have all this uh, ugliness in the streets all across the country. And the public is looking for something different. Andrew, don't rerun Frank, the campaign. Let me, ask, Fred, let, me, let me ask you about economic issues, though, uh, especially given this, this audience that's watching us now. How do higher taxes play? And what do you think that the business community really thinks about the way they want to vote right now? So we've been measuring this. And I will tell you that there's greater acceptance for higher taxes today than there has ever been in my research. And this goes back to Reagan Mondale in 1984. That's how significant this is. A willingness <clears throat> to pay for the spending, a willingness to keep the economy going, a willingness to give something because of all the all the unrest that's out there. It's number one. Number two is the business community just wants predictability. They just want to know what's going to happen. And if they get that, at this point, they're willing to support anyone who gives them a sense of stability and a sense that, that things will calm down. And that's why Biden has actually moved in the business community. People are now considering voting for him again. It is Donald Trump's language. It is not his policies that matter.